Hello. Today I want to do a quick video on um, a popular mid-case upgrade for the 700R4 for all 60E, and that is the Sonic Smart Shell. So, all my high-performance builds get this shell, um, and I use that uh, in concert with a late model 4L60E reaction shaft, so 03 and up, that accepts a bearing in place of the thrust washer that otherwise sits between it and the sun shell. So one of the more common issues with any 700R4 for all 60E is the sun shell fracturing, snapping at the neck or stripping the splines out. And when that happens, you lose reverse second and fourth gear. Um, on most rebuilds, either factory or even mild builds, uh, you can install a, you know, a typical hardened and heat treated shell that's available you know, widely everywhere, trans shops, online, eBay, places like that. And those shells will be perfectly fine. I mean, they'll you know they'll survive for a very very long time. Uh, the neck splines and that neck area are um, heat treated, so they're not as prone to failure uh, as the you know the stock sun shells are. But when it comes to high performance, uh, heavy duty, anything that's going to see uh, a real intense application, you want to go a step further. So that's why I like the Sonic Smart Shell because it does a few things for you that uh, either factory or even um, upgraded, hardened, and heat treated shells won't do, and that is it really reinforces that uh, junction area between the neck and the body of the shell, and at the same time it also rollerizes the rear thrust surface between the center support and the shell itself. So I'll kind of walk through the components that you see on the bench and um, kind of take you through what the differences are and, and then we'll go ahead and actually install the shell into the transmission, in this case it's a early 4L60E. Okay, when you compare the two visually, you can readily see a significant difference in the area of the next lines between the Sonic shell and the factory shell. Now, this is a factory shell that came out of this transmission I'm working on. It's got, I don't know how many miles on it, you know, well over 100,000. And as you can see, right in here is where the wear, um, you know, gets, gets real aggressive, especially when you have either high mileage or just hard use applications or vehicles that are not serviced as they should be and, um, you know, lubrication runs low. And what'll happen is either these splines here will strip or this entire neck will just literally separate from the rest of the body. Either way, the end result's the same, no reverse second or fourth. So you compare that to the Sonic shell and it's completely reinforced in this area. So you have like what looks like billet steel, um, you know, kind of a billet steel um, plate machined and welded into the rest of the shell. So the splines are heat treated. The surface area here for the bearing is billet and heat treated. And then you can see on the back, it's also heat treated. So through and through, it's just a much stiffer piece. You notice here on the engagement lugs that um, you know kind of spline into the reverse input drum. These are also heat treated. There's no heat treated, or no, there's no heat treatment on the corresponding lugs on the factory piece, and these like to wear out. So then you'll get like you know a real noisy transmission as you know these parts are moving and rotating while the vehicle's on the road. So now we'll compare the Sonics race with the factory race. And this is the uh, inner race for the low roller clutch. It's a one-way clutch. And so there's nothing really wrong with the factory piece, but you'll notice it's not as, uh, or the Sonics piece is shorter because it's modified for a bearing. Okay, so it's also only lugged on one side and then on the other side, the non-lug portion is what actually faces front toward the transmission. Let me see if I can get that in here. Yeah, you can barely make it out. That says right there, front. Okay. 
then the third pieces we'll look at are the bearings themselves along with the reaction shaft. So the reaction shaft splines onto the forward ring gear and then you know inserts into the transmission um, right in front of the sun shell. So in a factory application you'd have your thrust washer right here on the front side and then you'd have your black thrust washer that would go here on the race on the center sport side and then this would spline in like this and of course there would be the rear sun gear um, that the shell would actually spline on too. And then up through 2003 all 700 R4s and 4L60Es had this um, standard reaction shaft uh, that is flat here in the um, area where the thrust washer goes. So it would sit in here like this, obviously its ring gear would be you know, re-splined to it, but um, this is just a static thrust surface, so it's an area where heat can build up. In 03 and up, GM rollerized that surface. They didn't make any changes to the sun shell, but they did introduce a step into um, uh, the, the uh, surface that mates or you know, thrusts against the sun shell and they installed a large Torrington bearing here. And then they also heat treated these splines. So any high performance application, high horsepower, racing, uh, street strip, uh, or heavy duty towing, hauling, anything of that nature, um, I always recommend upgrading to the Sonic Smart Shell as well as uh, installing a late model 4L60E reaction shaft so that we can rollerize both surfaces, front and rear, of the sun shell. All right, so the first thing you want to do is just go ahead and install your inner race into your center support and just rotate it clockwise until it seats. Okay, just double check. You should rotate clockwise and lock counterclockwise. And again, for high performance, I would recommend um, replacing the little roller clutch with a brand new one from Borg Warner. Uh, although I would say that as far as, you know, failure rate of this little roller, I mean, it's very, very, very low. Uh, I hardly ever see it in 700s and 4L60Es. I much, it's much more common in TH350s. And I think I mentioned this a few times, but um, you can actually take this uh, 4L60E center support and install it into a TH350 with a new low roller clutch and it'll go right in, no mods necessary. You want to go ahead and dip your bearings in fresh transmission fluid. And this one's a little big, so I'm just going to try to get as much of it, you know, captured and caught up as I can. And this one's even bigger. So this is our reaction shaft bearing, and that other one was the bearing for the sun shell to center support thrust. So that's that's that bearing came in the kit. This transmission is going to be um, installed into a uh, 94 uh, Chevy Silverado. Uh, man likes to tow with it. Uh, it tows like a you know a boat or small trailers, um, you know utility trailers for tools. I think it's a working truck, so this would be a good upgrade to help him manage heat and at the same time preserve some some horsepower and just strengthen the transmission overall. Okay, so for the sun shell, your bearing is going to go with this side here that I'm putting assembly lube on, it's going to go face down. Alright, let me clean off my hands, we'll reposition the camera, and then we'll do the installation. So we're ready for the uh, center support. We got 
all of the uh, rear gear train in as well as the uh, low reverse clutch pack. So um, make sure you have your anti-clump spring and to the extent you can try to make sure it's seated against case wall so that it doesn't interfere with anything. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is drop in the center support. And then just rotate your Sonic's inner race so that it splines into the lugs on the uh, rear planet. And then install your snap ring. I mean, you can install the rear sun gear if you wanted to before you install the snap ring. I mean, it doesn't matter. You want to try to get this thing so that it's the ends are between the anti-clunk spring. So I wasn't paying much attention, but typically I'll start it maybe about an inch to the left, my left of the left the left end of the anti-clunk spring, so that when it fully seats, you know, kind of rotates in place. I have minimal work to do to get it to where the ends. Do not overlap or interfere with that spring. All right, now your sun gear. And now your smart shell. And then lastly, your assembled reaction shaft slash ring gear for the forward planet. Yeah, I gotta lube that bushing, but. All right, see how nice and smooth that whole assembly spins? It's a big difference, especially when you're going down the road at anywhere from like three, four, five thousand 5,000 RPM you know, or you're racing or you're towing a heavy load, uh, the Sonic Smart Shell, as far as, you know, upgrades to strengthen the middle of the case is um, probably the best upgrade you can do. Um, so highly recommended. And to be clear, I don't work for Sonics. I'm not, you know, shilling for them. I don't have any kind of agreements, either formal or informal with them. Uh, I will occasionally plug a product if I like it, if I had really good success with it. And, you know, if I think that it could help others that are, you know, uh, building transmissions and trying to accomplish some of the same things I am. So anyway, uh, that's the whole deal with the uh, Sonic Smart Shell. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.